What's up, guys? How you doing? I'm gonna transition here. Trying a little different setup, so you'll have to forgive me. There we go. Uh, time, week, cooped up in your homes. I'm used to it. So, I a stream. I may do a test today. That'll just be geared toward kids who want to create and draw, all that good stuff. So, keep an eye out for that. Working title is Sketchy Kids. A little bit of a play on words there, but in any case, I'll be posting links about that. So if you have kids at home and you want to give them something creative to do, I'll be doing crying kids or try to. Sometimes we're not perfect at it, but it's always been a fun and good thing for us. So thanks for joining today. This is Sketch Today. I'm Spencer. And as always, I will be taking a little bit of time to warm up and while I warm up, I want you guys to hit me with suggestions or ideas about what you want to see. So definitely let me know and I'll try and implement those here on the stream. Thanks for checking in. Let me know where you're watching from. I am in Salt Lake City, Utah. In my house, like I said, cooped up all week. I did go for a walk this morning. And that was nice. It was nice to uh, nice to get out, get some fresh air, stretch the legs, all that good stuff. So hopefully you guys are taking time to take care of yourselves as well. It's easy to get stir crazy, as I'm sure you know. All right, so I'm just gonna do some warm ups here. <laughs> like I said, I never usually. What's up, Jason? Uh, I never usually. Uh, prepare stuff ahead of time. So I'm kind of depending on, on you guys for some suggestions today. Let me take care of my ashy hands here. This is live, this is raw. This is like my favorite thing, my favorite time is when you guys are here with me. So thank you. Matthew is in Vancouver. I forget where Jason's uh, checking in from. ST says, Spencer, I'm curious to know a little bit more about your setup. We're moving ID classes online and I'm currently trying to get a handle on what works well for showing sketching. Um, I'd be happy to give you a tour. I'm trying to think of the best way to do that. I could do a walkabout with my camera, but there is a video on my channel that goes over all my equipment and my studio setup, ST Scott. So if you, if you just go to my channel or I can just throw the link here in the chat for you guys and you guys will be able to see that. Um, let's see here, studio. And I'm gonna copy this link. I'll just throw it in here on the chat for ST. Boom, right there. So that video goes over all of my studio setup. So as always on Sketch Today, I'm gonna warm up. Hit me up with your suggestions, what you want to see drawn. I thought about doing an F1 car. Circles, circles, ellipses, straight lines, sometimes squares and circles and ellipses in those circles, but just warming up. Body works a little bit differently. So when I went for my walk and man, it takes a minute to warm up, but when you warm up and things are flowing, that's when it's really enjoyable. So all of this stuff, super important as always. If you're joining for the first time, say hi, tell me where you're from, how you found me, all that good stuff. Join the Discord if you wanna drop an image in. I'm still trying to figure out how to share that screen in OBS, Open Broadcast Studio, which is the software I use, ST, for streaming and it allows me to allows me to have multiple inputs arrange my screen like you see it and do graphics and all that good stuff so and it's free software which is the best part but i'm still trying to figure out how to show a portion of my laptop screen without crashing the program so i need to get on that but we'll be streaming or I will be streaming rather this weekend as well on Sunday if you're around around midday Pacific so around 11 a.m. Pacific time I will be streaming as well 
and you guys can come hang out again. So thank you for the support. Thank you for your interest. Fair warning, there may be kid noises, kid sounds, kids showing up, but it's all good. We are adjusting to our new reality, as I'm sure lots of you are. If you're a kid, you're probably wanting to get outside. If you're a grown-up, I don't want to get political or ideological or any of that on the stream. Draw a Hummer. I could draw a Hummer-style vehicle. Is the screen chopping for anyone else? Um, yeah, I don't know. Let me know if it is. Oh, yeah, it looks a little bit choppy. Um, I don't think it's OBS this time. So let me close some tabs here, see if that helps. And what else do we have going on? Okay, sorry, I was just checking the Discord there. Hello everyone, just gonna check in on the chat. Um, Swyam, ST, Thebalt M, hello, hello. Tom, Sila, Corey. Uh, ghoul Swyam. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. My apologies if it's a little bit choppy. Let me <laughs> let me push pause and see if I can get my kids to stop streaming for a bit. That's probably what's happening. So I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Hopefully, hopefully this is a little bit better. Um, I think one thing one thing we're realizing as we all work from home is how um, how much <laughs> how much life might change. Oh, a hammer! I thought you said Hummer. Um, how much may and will change with time? So um, we're just gonna have to deal with it and recognize that this is just how it is so once again sketch a day hi welcome if this is your first time i am recording the stream as well just in case so if it's super choppy here i can re-upload it what's up mauricio um i can re-upload it and then it should look a little bit better but we can hang out still and like i said i'm going to be doing this sunday and probably Tuesday or Wednesday, I'll be back. Okay, so we got our circles and ellipses, straight lines, some more ellipses. And this is really important if you guys are trying to improve your skills. I know it probably looks boring if I'm drawing, and usually I do a car <laughs> with these ellipses of ellipses that increase in degree as I move down the paper that are roughly the same size. Now, because I think it's just that there's so many people online, probably in my neighborhood too, that uh, things are a little, little bit choppy here. All right. So like I said, all this stuff warming up looks like maybe a waste of time, but here in this case, if I were to make a couple of these ellipses, just a little bit bigger, one, two, I'm using a paper made flare pen. That's what I'm using. And then connect these like so. Just like that. Connect a couple of these, maybe a little inset here. now have a sketch of something like a water bottle. So all of these practice steps really are just to get your brain in the right frame of mind or frame of mind in the right state. And as long as you're aware of what you're doing, like it's super valuable. So all these warm up things really are just to kind of help you get ready to draw, 
and see things. All right, so we had a request for a hammer. I'm gonna do that, an epoxy table. That sounds interesting. Okay, I'm gonna write these down. The epoxy table sounds interesting. So hammer, thank you for the suggestion. Who was that? That was Corey. Thank you, Corey, for the suggestion. I'm gonna do a live edge resin table of some sort. That sounds fun, because we can use some blues and some browns as well. Okay, let's see, hammer. Um, I'm gonna continue using these chart packs that uh, Chad Sanborn was happy. He's probably getting tired of me saying his name, but I'm super grateful. Made a contribution, I was able to get some markers. So I'm gonna use these. And as far as the hammer goes, you know, maybe play with a few design, a few design variations to start. So how about we start with a handle? Actually, let's talk about something um, that I find helpful. So there's a creative technique called scamper. I don't know if you guys have heard of this before, but S is for substitute. I don't write vertically, so this may <laughs> take a minute. Substitute, combine, adapt, modify, Sometimes you can say magnify as well. Put to another use, put to another use. Uh, I think this is enhance or eliminate. No, eliminate. Eliminate and reverse. All right, so the idea here, I probably should have done the scamper vertically and then written it out. Um, but the idea here is when you, when you have a product or something that you wanna change or design and you're looking for just creative brainstorming techniques or ways to come up with additional ideas, one of the things you can do is you can, I don't know if you guys can see, what I'm writing super well. So let me zoom in here. So substitute, combine, adapt, modify, put to another use, eliminate or reverse. And the idea is that you can take a look at your object. So I have a head to the hammer. There's also a claw, right? If this is a claw hammer, there's a handle. Okay. So I can substitute. So I could ask, start asking the questions, you know, what else could I use for a handle? What else could I use for the claw? The claw is meant to remove nails. So what else could I have there to remove the nails? For the head, um, I could substitute the head for something else. What if the head were, I don't know, you, you just come up with ideas that way. Or you combine. Um, I could combine the head and the handle. So what if the head was the handle? What does that look like? Um, adapt. I could adapt this hammer to be something else. Like I could adapt it to um, fit somewhere, go somewhere that it, it normally isn't. Um, I can magnify. So what if the head was really big and we had a teeny handle? Or what if the handle was really big and we had a teeny head on the hammer? Okay, those are things we can do and questions we can ask to come up with interesting concepts. Put to another use, so what else could you use a hammer for? Eliminate, what if you got rid of the handle on a hammer? What would that look like? Um, and then reverse, what if the handle was in the front or at the top rather, and the head was at the bottom? Now, not always is this gonna give you perfect results or um, an answer right at the beginning, but it's a way to kind of think laterally. So I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna pick one of these and let's try and eliminate the handle. Okay, so if we eliminate the handle on a hammer, we need to be able to hold it or strike a nail somehow, right? So if I have a board of some sort and I wanna be able to put a nail in, I need to be able to strike this nail with the head of a hammer and no handle. This is my hammer. 
See, this is where text comes in handy because my sketch isn't super clear, but my text clarifies it a little bit. Okay, so I need to be able to strike this nail. All right, if I don't have a handle, okay, and I'm, I, I have an idea in my head, um, but if I don't have an if I, if I don't have a handle, I still need to be able to hold his head. And the head essentially is just the head is just a mass, a weighted mass that we apply momentum to, and strike this nail, and the nail is then forced into this pliable material, wood, concrete, whatever the case may be. That material is a little bit weaker than the wood, or weaker than the nail rather, and so we're able to drive the nail in. So I have an idea, and let's say. We had a hand, and I'm just gonna sketch a quick hand here, right? What if you could, what if you could move your hand in a way and you had weight, so some sort of weight or mass, okay? That then strikes the nail and drives it into the wood. Okay, so we need to be able to hold this mass and if I'm holding this mass let's, let's say this is my my fingers and my hand here if I'm holding this mass and I want to strike down whatever this mass is okay I need to make sure that there are a few things like I don't want my fingers getting in the way under here if this is my new hammer surface I also want a certain amount of precision with that surface so maybe Maybe this angles down a bit. I need to be able to pull the nail out and hopefully you can kind of see where this is going a little bit. But I've got this mass that you can hold, strike, whatever. So I'll get to the concepts and start showing. I'm imagining something, being able to hold it, like I have this clear ball at my desk, but being able to hold this ball almost like this and strike stuff, okay? Now, clearly my fingers overlap this ball too much, so it has to be a certain size. And so let's put together a sketch page that kind of explains what I'm talking about and we'll apply some, some marker to that. Okay, so let's start with the ball. I want it to rest comfortably in my hand and I need some sort of strike surface that's a little bit smaller. So in essence, and as I'm working, a lot of times I'll just work like this, orthographic, slight perspective views, Right, so maybe this is my orthographic side view, orthographic bottom view, and on this bottom, I want to kind of have this knurled or etched surface because this is where the nail is going to be gripped. Now, the other thing I need is a way for me to pull out nails. So if I have a nail, right. Yeah, it's a fun ball I use as reference if I'm drawing something something clear. I know a few of you have asked for uh, a tutorial on drawing clear stuff. So if I need to drive this nail, or pull this nail out rather, let's say the nail's in the board, and I need to pull this out, I'm imagining that on this surface, maybe there's a little bit of a slot, okay? So I could machine a slot in say right here, something that allows me to kind of grip a nail and pull it out, All right? So we have a hand hand hammer. I know f a few of you have asked me, how do you come up with different ideas that, um, waiting for the topic video from me, I'm not sure what you mean, Harshit. Um, so a few of you have asked, you know, how do you come up with ideas when the thing doesn't exist? Here's an example. I've eliminated the handle from a hammer. I know I need to drive a nail. I need to be able to remove the nail. So I'm imagining maybe there's some slot or it could even be, let's see, could it be that? Now some sort of slot that would accept much like a claw hammer. So we're taking the claw from the claw hammer and essentially making that a part of the concept here, okay? So if I were drawing the underside now, look something like this okay and let's just use a little gray marker just to 
help the form out. Okay, just a little gray marker on the page, like so. Maybe some shadow, some for the neural surface here, nail, slot, and this other concept. So as far as like, hey, how do you put together leverage for pulling the nail? Yes, that is true. Um, how do you generate these concepts quickly? This is one way. I guess it depends on, you know, maybe this maybe this is not a heavy duty hammer, but like if you're just around the house working on a small project, um, you know, maybe this is something you could use. The other option is, you know, maybe this is slightly extended so that you do get that leverage. You know, maybe there's a a little bit of a surface transition that we could introduce to our tool. Maybe that would be enough to kind of pry and pull on. A little bit of an affordance. And this is for fingers to grab onto right there. But that's a really good point. Um, one of the things that makes that nail removal on the hammer work is that leverage. All right, so maybe that's the sketch concept page. Nail, slot, we've got strike area. Right there. And maybe this is elongated or extended. Elongated, that's such a weird word. All right, and then you could pull the nail that way. So now with a hand, just to explain the concept, is it good to sketch doodles or thumbnail sketches? Yes, absolutely. Um, I believe in my last live stream, I mentioned a sketch is a sketch is a, con a conversation, and that's I didn't come up with that. That was from Mike DeTulo, actually, um, friend of mine. Also, an avid sketcher an educator of sorts, but a sketch is a conversation and a rendering is a statement. So in other words, when you've gotten to the point where you're rendering, you should be fairly confident about what you're doing. All right, so we got this hand here. A lot of times I'll just look at my own hand as I'm sketching just because I'm not great at drawing hands and the point of the sketch is in the hand so much as giving the thing some sort of context. So maybe that's our modified claw hammer and maybe it wouldn't work. That's okay. I think getting used to just sketching our ideas and thinking through problems. Not everything has to be completely perfect or work at the onset. Dare to dream a little bit. Yeah, anyway, something like that, just a little contextual sketch to show what's happening. And then to round things out, we can just do kind of a a final concept sketch to say here's our mushroom hammer as I'm I'm calling it right now anyways and maybe we do have that slight extension almost looks like a bull's foot or a cow foot slight claw Add a background here just to tie these two together. I'm trying to remember what the second request was. I saw a request for an Audi. I'm not going to draw an Audi today, though. Let's see. I want some color on this thing. So the bottom I'm going to keep metal, and then I'm going to do some color texture on the top here of this sketch. 
What's the name brand of the pen? It's a Papermate Flare. Papermate Flare. Let's see if this will work. Will it? Ah. Right there. Papermate Flare. So if you're interested, that's what it is. And you can try that out. Hello, Malty from Germany. Ah. Swayam says he didn't understand the car perspective video. Um. What time is it here? It is 11 a.m. right now in Salt Lake City, Utah. Oh yeah, I was gonna do a live edge table, so I'll do that next. Comic character. Maybe next time, I'm gonna have to practice and warm up for that one, honestly. It looks like the stream froze. <laughs> so, my apologies if that is the case. Yeah, I don't know what's happening today. So, what's up in Discord? How you doing? Feel free to drop an image if you um, want me to resketch something. I may not be able to get it to it this stream, but definitely Sunday I can look into that. All right, so I wanted to do a color, and I'll just do something red. We'll keep this as an abbreviated marker sketch. All right, something like that. And then a little bit of gray under here. Like so. All right. A little bit of contrast addition. And as always, guys, you can find the high resolution scans higher resolution scans I should say they're only 300 dpi but you can find those in the Google Drive link I upload those after any every stream has anyone done that yet or you have no idea what I'm talking about let me know let's throw a little logo action on this guy some texture because I think if you're gripping this you'd want it to definitely have a little bit of texture so just adding some texture dots to the top like so and that's what I mean or that's rather how I come up with newer new concepts is sometimes using creative tools like scamper to push myself to think of something else now if you're an industrial designer this is really just the first step. It's not by any means the final or close to final step because part of the process after this would be prototyping. So I would want to get something like maybe a hard ball, cut it in half, um, sculpt or shape some of this metal, something to create the concept to then test it out. And then after I test it, I can validate my idea that way. And once the idea is validated, then we can test more, make adjustments, and then go into production if necessary. So there's my quick sketch and concept development for this handleless hammer. All right, so next we had a request for a live edge table of some sort. I'm just gonna set these to the side for now. And here's a reminder that chart pack markers bleed a lot. If you're going to use markers, invest in some marker paper. You won't regret it. You'll save your markers. They'll last longer. Your drawings will actually look better. So do I visual the color combination for the sketch or random? Um, I do visualize sometimes. These are chart pack ad markers, Javier. Welcome to the stream. 
And thank you, Nenen. Nenen. I, I hope I'm pronouncing your name. I'm probably butchering everyone's name. So, my apologies. Um, AK Ninja, AKA Ninja, you'll just have to rewind or backtrack. I did cover a little bit of the scamper method. Substitute, combine, adapt, modify, put to another use, eliminate, or reverse. Just an interesting way to play with physical forms or systems or really anything that you've got. All right, so we had kind of a request for a resin table. Um, I guess it depends on the type of resin table. I'm, I'm trying to think here what would be the coolest thing. Let's see. So resin tables, if you're not familiar, are tables where, you know, you might get something like an old piece of wood or you might put pieces of wood together and then fill the void. So if this were a full table, for example, perspective's not perfect here, but if this were a full volume, and let's say I just had an interesting piece of wood, and I'm just gonna draw parts of the wood here. So maybe this is you know, some end piece on the wood, and maybe it transitions over, and on the bottom I've got you know, stuff like this happening. And I need to fill in these voids on this table. So let's say there's just, there's just an interesting section of a tree. Maybe I pick this up, you know, from my local woodworker or whatever. Interesting section of a tree. And this is encased in resin. So from the side, it might look Something like this. Uh, let's see. This I'm going to bring over as well. So maybe it looks something like this from the side. Some giant piece of wood. Okay. So I'm going to jump to my earth tones, my trusty earth tone markers that I have here. These are Copic markers and I'm just going to freestyle it today and hope I don't mess up too bad. So I've got this E13 and let's use 37, 39, 38, 39, 39. Let's see what this 13 looks like though, color wise. Okay. So I'm just going to roll with this. So. Here, let's say this this bit of wood, the exposed bit, is you know maybe a blonde wood. So as I'm filling this in, I'm trying to do it in a way that mimics a bit the wood grain you might see on something like this. This maybe rotted out or otherwise damaged piece of wood. And then on the outside, I've got the bark. So for the bark. And maybe I should actually, you know, draw some of this bark shape in here with my pen. I'm just trying to mimic a bit of what this might look like. A lot of drawing is really just about capturing a symbol and having it represent in a familiar way something that you might see in real life because it's impossible for me anyways I don't have a photographic memory it's impossible for me to accurately replicate something that I've I've seen so it's always about the effect and not the exactness of that thing so here just trying to create a bit of a bark feel Maybe a couple lines here. And then maybe this is more exposed wood. Maybe a bit of bark. I actually have some tables like this in my home. I, I do woodworking for fun. And I've made a few pieces like this. All right, a couple lines here, just like that. 
We'll return to the light. For these sections and then let's go with something dark. So I've got this E27. Shade in the bark here. Just like that. Okay, and you'll notice I'm leaving some bits a little bit lighter. That's because I'm gonna come back in and fill those in with something else, okay? All right, so now for the wood grain itself, what I wanna do is use, I don't wanna use the pen actually, unless there is you know, some sort of spalting perhaps in the wood. I might wanna throw in just some dark lines. Spalting is when the wood picks up minerals or deposits and then you get these like dark spots in the wood grain. That's what spalting is. All right, so there's there's a little bit closer. And so now, actually, maybe what I'll do is have a little bit of the, the dark part of the wood show up under this little overhang right here. I like that idea. just feels right. Sometimes you're drawing and something just feels right. Just go for it. This is one of those instances. Okay. So a little bit of dark there and then just touching up on the bark, some of the, the gaps between these segments of bark, make those a little darker. We'll add some texture with pen, pencil if necessary on top. Thank you, Boren. Very kind of you. I know some of you have asked in the past, you know, how can I help? How can I contribute? Um, definitely watching the videos helps a ton. If you want to contribute in other ways, there is PayPal and Venmo, or just buy something from the store. That's always a good, good way to do it. I do have some new brushes that I'll be releasing for Procreate coming out soon. So you'll want to keep an eye out for that. All right, back to the grain. So here, now I'm just gonna, with the marker, just brush in something that looks like wood grain that you might be familiar with. Something like this. We'll darken that up as necessary. All right. Just kind of come around some of these lines. All right, I probably have time for one more sketch, so you guys let me know what suggestions you have. I think I said I would do like an airplane or some sort of aviation related thing, but you guys let me know. Can I do clothing? I, I probably could. It's on my list of videos to do for the main channel, so might be a good warm up. But we'll see. Depends on depends on how I'm feeling. Contrast is your friend, remember that, not your enemy. Just work light until you get it right. Build up as you go. Make sure you have the right paper. Makes a big difference. All right, something like that. It's kind of a weird tree thing. All right, so now I'm going to grab my blue markers. Nice light blue. Let's see if this one will work. Yeah, I'll just use this B52. And the reason I'm using blue, I mean, I could use some gray as well. But I like the idea of maybe a blue resin. So I've got this really, really, really light blue here. Another one there. That I can use. I'm not gonna spill my coffee this time. Last time I spilled my 
I spilled my coffee on the uh, broadcast controller, and that was kind of a nightmare. So, all right, so I've got this really, really pale blue. You guys can't probably can't even see it showing up. I'm going to use this to do the outline. Draw a drone. I could draw a drone. That sounds fun. I like that. All right, so it's really light blue. Kind of build up as I go in the corners here. All right, so build up in the corners. And whenever I do something translucent, transparent, I like to, and I'm shading over the brown as well, but I like to do the corners and make those a little bit darker. So yeah, maybe it's a little bit of a bluish resin that we've got going shade over the brown because that resin is encasing it all, right? Futuristic shoe, drone. We got some good suggestions. Thank you. Thank you. Much appreciated. I think I could do both of those. When you say futuristic shoe, what do you mean? I'm putting some bubbles in the resin because it happens. Happens to the best of us woodworkers out there. No matter how hard you try, sometimes you just get resin in your stuff. And you gotta deal with it. That's just reality. All right, just to help this pop a bit, I'm gonna shade in with black on this background element. Just a little thing here. This is a wide Copic marker. You've never seen one. They do make them. And you can get them blank, actually, if you want to make your own color. That's something you can do. So I'm just mapping out where this background kind of ends. Because what I want to do is be able to show the background through some of this clear stuff. This black marker is drying out, so I'm going to have to refill it. Not here on the stream, but it's due for a refill because I use it a lot. But cool thing about dry markers is you can sometimes use them to your advantage and get things like a nice little fade to the side. Um, and if the glare is making this look weird, again, I will scan and upload it, but that's what it looks like. Now for this clear portion, what I'm going to do is take a, a cool gray marker like this cool gray three. And then on the inside here, start to shade in. A little, little bit backed off the corner, but shade in so it's nice and dark. We'll build that up as necessary. But I'm trying to show that this is translucent. I'll zoom in so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. All right, so I'm gonna do a drone and a futuristic shoe it looks like. gray, blend it in, because I want it to look like this thing is translucent, if not transparent. Okay, I've got a cool gray 7, which is probably too dark, so let me grab a cool gray 5, my giant case of gray markers here. 
And if you don't have all these shades of markers, that's okay. I'm a little bit crazy. When it comes to markers, I love markers. I will always use markers. So that's a thing and it'll always be a thing. I think my camera is cutting out again. So my apologies if, if that's happening right now. Actually, I don't think it's the camera. I think it's the uh, something to do with the stream. Sometimes it just wigs out on me. It's not like that one morning when I spilled my coffee on it. That was kind of a nightmare. I was like, shoot, I'm gonna have to buy a new one. This is not good. It's not good at all. All right, a little bit of gray back there. Punch, push that. And let's add some line weight to the bottom. I also have this white pit artist pen. Um, someone did tell me it is water water based. I'm not sure. It is India ink. If that's water based, then sure. Um, but I'm not an ink scientist, so I don't. Maybe an indication of a shadow of some sort. And I'll use this 70% gray marker just to fade in or fade from the corner rather. My shadow. And with the white marker, I can add little texture hits to things like the bark. So if I want to lighten that up or on the edges here, make these just a little brighter, I can do that. But just a nice little touch you can add to your sketch kind of help things pop and feel textured, okay? As for when to stop, that's kind of up to you to decide and figure out. Just comes with experience. You just kind of know when enough's enough. <laughs> and it really depends on the purpose of the sketch, the audience, and so forth, but I do want to put a little bit of this in shadow right under here. So I'm just going to shade on the inside of this just a little bit. As always, I will upload these, so don't worry if, if it looks weird. If you want to check it out, you'll be able to check that out, okay? All right, missed a little bit on the top, so bear with me. All right, so something like that. Hopefully that is what you're expecting or um, hoping for as you requested a resin table. This one, this sketch down here, just keep it kind of loose. Maybe it has some notes. Maybe you just say, you know, it's, this is the side, that kind of thing. Tree, trunk. This could be polyester resin. I feel like design handwriting is one of those things that's a lost art. Annotations, notes that just look good. Um, so I'm a, I'm a little bit, I'm on a little bit of a crusade to bring it back. Um, so definitely check out my video on how to annotate your sketches and make those look like a nice component or part of your design presentation and sketch. So you'll want to check that video. All right, I'm going to set this one to the side. Thank you so much for the suggestion. Let's go futuristic shoe. All right, I'm running out of running out of uh, marker paper, by the way. It's a good thing I have tons more. 
All right, futuristic shoe. Um, I guess in the meantime, I'll, I'll I'll maybe start with the drone, but in the meantime, I want you to tell me a little bit about the shoe. Um, is it a sports shoe, running shoe, hiking shoe? Uh, is it a dress shoe? Give me some more information, but I'll, I'll work on the drone to begin with. I was just grabbing another pad of marker paper, guys. So when in doubt, rough it out. Um, that can happen with a uh, gray marker. Um, that can happen with, I'm not familiar with the Nike Earl, so I'm gonna have to look that up. I can do that with gray marker, I can do that with pen, but the idea being you wanna just rough things out before you start. Um, so, I'm gonna use the gray marker method today, because I feel like it. And let's see, I want the perspective to be somewhat forced. because I can't go too big on this paper. So we're gonna have to force the perspective a bit. And that just means they're, the vanishing points are a bit closer together than they would be normally. All right, and I want these rotors, see what I mean? It's like, it's kind of hard with the, the size of the paper I'm using here, but we're gonna roll with it. Maybe the drone itself will be a little bit smaller on the inside. Sketch something up here, little body or volume for the body rather. And I'm gonna have these members connected to rotors. I'm just sketching in some cylinders as a placeholder for where these rotors would be. And now, see I feel like these are too small, but I'm just gonna roll with it. So, nice big rotors here. The drone body, you know, maybe I'll just do some sort of hex based thing and maybe a little camera that's mounted to it and some sort of feet so it can land. And maybe these feet, you know, can fold in on this drone. I'm gonna extend the head just a little bit. And you guys might not be able to make much out of this mess, but um, this is another way that I think through new ideas, designs, things I haven't done before. It's just a good way to kind of lay things down and sketch them out. So this one won't likely be, you know, a super tight marker rendering, but um, it'll be a sketch that represents, you know, the functional concept. I'm just taking a sip of coffee here, guys and we'll be right back. Okay, checking in in the chat. Jordan, uh, with ID work, do you still do marker sketches as a deliverable? Yes, I do. Um, although sometimes what I'll do is scan the sketch in and then do a little bit of Photoshop on top. But if you do it as a marker sketch, it immediately communicates to the client the level you're at in the project. If you're just dumping CAD renderings at the beginning of the project, they're gonna think you're done and that these concepts are fully baked and that's not doing justice or doing a, doing a favor to the design process in any way. Do I ever use fine tip Sharpies? Um, the only Sharpies I use are bullet tip Sharpies and I think I've got some here. Let's see. Yeah, so the only Sharpies I use are these guys. Um, right here and they're good for a few sketches and then the tip kind of wears down but I do use them from time to time I'll, maybe I'll just leave that one out but that is something I use um, let's see is UX UI related to product design ask Harshit 
That's a great question. Um, I feel like industrial designers are the original user experience designers. User experience really is just about designing products for people that work well. And to do that, you have to understand how people think and act and all that good stuff. And historically speaking, a lot of our interactions or user experiences involved hardware products. So no offense to graphic designers or anyone else who is coming into UX or UI um, from at a, a an or in an orthogonal way, meaning, you know, you, you didn't necessarily go through ID, but I do feel like industrial designers were like the OG UX because that's where a lot of our interactions happened and began. So as the professions evolved um, in, in my career and experience, some of the best user experience and, and yeah user experience designers I should say not UI because I think that requires a certain I different way of thinking and seeing things um, I feel like industrial designers make the best UX designers for sure thank you Boren Boren says this is very nice thank you all right let's get back to it coffee break over thanks for hanging guys this is super fun Thank you for the suggestions. Could I design glasses? I need to understand how to design them. I do have a drawing tutorial on my YouTube channel that you can check out that kind of goes over drawing things on the face, what that's about. All right, so two, ellipse, two ellipses rather, because I'm gonna have guards on my drone. So these are encased blades no ellipse templates today we're freestyling it like we always do on sketch day welcome happy Friday happy quarantine I hope or self what is it shelter in place self-imposed hopefully you're not absolutely going insane like a lot of people are and you're taking this time to reconnect with family or what's real. Um, certainly been certainly been an interesting time for all of us. So on a normal sketch, yes, I and even starting this, I would probably do another overlay here to get the final sketch. But we'll just keep it keep it Gucci. Some of these things I'm like yeah that would be a little bit off or weird but that's okay just redrawing not tracing my drone keep it light so like I was saying maybe these legs fold up or retract in some way. So I'm just going to throw some lines in here to indicate that maybe that's the case. We've got our camera. Just using a cylinder for now. But maybe that's the camera and maybe this is some sort of sensor. And the reason for that is you might want to pan, pan tilt or zoom while flying. Maybe it's not so much that you want to adjust the position of the drone to get that shot, but rather position the camera to get the shot that you want. All right, more leg stuff. So remember, one of, at least one of the things I learned, rather, as I have been going through my career is that different situations call for different types of sketches, levels of detail, all that good stuff. I do have a video about types of sketches that you're welcome to check out, but essentially, You want to think about your audience, think about 
um, what it is you're trying to communicate, right? So are you trying to show the concept at a glance or are you trying to show detail? Um, I try not to show everything in the same sketch because it tends to lead to just messy things happening. So think about who is who is looking at the sketch and what part of the design of the product or experience are you trying to communicate with your sketch and that's going to help you um, Sorry, just a sec here. I actually, I messed this up. Um, this one should be way closer. So I'm gonna do an overlay. When will this outbreak end? I don't know, man. I don't know. It's crazy though. All right, I'm just gonna do an overlay. And then I'll point out what I messed up. If you guys haven't seen, if you didn't notice it already. But this rotor was just a little bit. Especially if the body is, you know, somewhere over here. But I'm gonna try and follow a similar similar design approach. Then we'll do the shoe and we'll call it good after that. But when in doubt, rough it out. There's always a fix. Sometimes that means starting over, which I've had to do here. Unless I was working digitally, then I could actually, uh, I could just cut and move that to right where I needed to, but nothing, uh, nothing wrong about redrawing. Either way. All right. So we've got our other drone arm there. This one would kind of come down and meet the body somewhere here. So that's why I wanted to move it. It just felt off and then I'll do instead of four blades I'll do three blades on these but yeah happy Friday guys hope you're staying safe I'll be back on Sunday around 11 p.m. or 11 a.m. Sorry, <laughs> around 11 a.m. Pacific. I will be streaming again. So if you're just joining and you missed the beginning, that's okay. Hit me up with suggestions, though. My apologies to the Discord gang. I ignored <laughs> you guys for a bit, but thanks for joining the Discord. You can always show your work, share something. There is a channel called Show Your Work. Um, feel free to join that. And next time I hope to show some of the stuff you guys are working on. Or if there's a sketch of mine that you tried to draw, whatever the case may be. Feel free to just post that in there. But yeah, man, these blades are hard to sketch. Um, <laughs> so I, I get why you um, requested this now. All right, let's get the backside of the body of this drone in. Maybe something like that. One more overlay and I would probably be like, you know, in the money zone. But we're just going to roll with it. And continue to use these juicy, juicy chart pack markers. Just a nice gray, gray wash with a couple color pops. Should be enough here. So 
So some gray shadows. And then we'll do that futuristic shoe. I have not looked at the shoe that was referenced, but hopefully it's not too crazy. Maybe just a little bit of shadow under here, just to frame it in place. Oh, hello, Tatsuya from Japan. That's crazy. This is a worldwide, we're going worldwide. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for joining. Thanks for being here. It's been fun as always. Maybe the blades are like red or something, or at least these could be like lights or illuminated. I don't know. Just thinking out loud. And these need to be attached somehow. So I'm just gonna show a little bit of that. How they attach back to the blade right there. A little texture. I'll bump the shadow and line weight in a few spots. Just to kind of help these help this pop. This is my first drone sketch, I think. Um, I don't believe I've done another one, so maybe I'll do a an actual YouTube video. Kind of deep dive, explain the process a little bit. That'd be fun. All right, so something like that. And maybe these legs are retractable. Retractable legs. Okay, for the shoe, I think I'm gonna do digital. I'll be using Procreate 5 camera. Maybe these are sensors. All that good stuff. All right, a little bit more shadow on the side here. Slight shadow for the rotors and I'm gonna call that good. All right. So there's our drone, there's our table that we did, and our hammer without a handle. So that's what we've done so far. And if you missed it, you'll be able to catch the replay. There's our drone underlay. I mean, I liked the underlay, I just really messed up on these two ellipses, so um, I, had to, I, had to, I had to bail and start over. but. I'll still scan it and upload it so you can see my mistake and hopefully learn from it. All right, so switching to digital here, I'm going to just create a new file on my iPad, just the size of the screen, keep it simple. Oh, thanks for joining the Discord, and then, and then, I don't know how to say your name. A cross between a running shoe and a dress shoe. You know, that sounds fun, actually. That sounds really fun. So I'm gonna take a little, take another little break Whew. with you guys. Um, I mentioned at the beginning of the stream that I will be doing, um, sorry, I'm just looking at that Nike Earl. Okay, that's pretty cool. I will be doing a kid-focused YouTube channel for those of you who are trapped, quote unquote, trapped at home with your kids. And every Thursday I do craft night with my kids. So I thought I would just show my kids and myself doing some stuff that we normally do. And hopefully that'll give you guys some ideas and ways to pass the time as we are kind of holed up in this new reality. Hello, Alok. Um, namaste as well. 
Okay, so this will be our final sketch. I'm gonna do a futuristic shoe, maybe pull some Earl elements in. Looks like the Nike Earl has some illumination, some laceless or simplified closure ideas. And then I like the idea of crossing with a dress shoe. So I am gonna be using my new Procreate brush set. It is almost ready. Part of, the, part of why it's taking a little bit longer is I'm trying to hone down to kind of the essentials here so that I'm not overwhelming you guys with like 30 brushes. Um, but I do like a lot of these and how they're turning out. So with that, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try a different point of view here and hopefully this works. So let's start by putting down a plane like so, and this is gonna represent the bottom of our shoe. Let's go ahead and move this, maybe scale it just a little bit. Okay. And draw up like so. And let's complete the box. Just keep it rough. Again, when in doubt, rough it out. Complete this box. All right, so this is gonna be representative of the volume for this shoe. And I wanna create, because I'm, I'm trying a different perspective, I wanna create this box to kind of guide me as I'm drawing. That's why I'm doing it this way. So, when in doubt, rough it out, always. A little bit more of a top-down top-down view and probably not even as top-down as I want actually so let's go with something like this all right there we go so that feels a little bit more dynamic dr dramatic Today in ID, is it more hand sketches or more computerized sketches? Um, hand sketching will always be a thing, I think. Um, VR is certainly interesting, but I haven't seen anything that would convince me yet that hand sketching is going away. The tools have certainly changed, but I don't think, uh, I don't think it's going away. All right, so now I'm just gonna crank the opacity down on this layer and with a red pencil, let's just go ahead and start cutting this up. All right, so this is a dress shoe, probably gonna have more of a point to the toe. Okay, and my heel, I'm gonna start somewhere about there. Okay, that's gonna be my heel. And then I have the back of the shoe coming up at a slight angle. And right where the heel is, I'm gonna project up as well, like so. Now, if this is a mid shoe, it's gonna have a different shape, but we're just gonna block these shapes in. Okay, so right at this midpoint on the toe as well. Actually, let's angle the toe out ever so slightly. It's probably a little bit too high there but connecting these lines you kind of create a rough outline or guide for you to use just like that so even even that's enough to say now i have a rough shape i can use to um guide the process as i'm drawing here Let's see, how long have I been live? I've been going for, okay, just about an hour. So we're, we're good on time. Why Procreate over Sketchbook Pro and iPad over Cintiq? Okay, I'll talk about that while I draw. And that's a really good question. So on the bottom now, I can add just a little block here for a heel and then toward the front, same thing. And I actually want to elongate this a little bit more. So I'm gonna take this doodle and tap warp. And with the warp tool now that I have the block in place, I can skew and scale 
and modify this in a way that you know feels a little bit more there we go feels a little bit more like a dress shoe would all right so now i'm going to switch to blue so there is a question why procreate why ipad um the simple answer is that sketchbook pro so let's start with sketchbook pro Okay, Sketchbook Pro is a product that is made by Autodesk, and I'm not sure when they stopped, but clearly they stopped development on the product. And because of that, for me anyways, I didn't feel like they were invested in the product, okay? So there's that. Um, Sorry, I'm just I'm just blocking uh, blocking in some shapes here that are typical of an athletic shoe, and then we'll combine the elements and add the futuristic stuff in as well. Um, so they kind of stopped development, which made me go, huh? I wonder if they're serious about this product. Like, hey, if you stop development, you're not updating. Yeah, you made it for you made it free, but free isn't always good or the best. So they made it free, um, but they really haven't touched it or done anything with it. So that makes me go, hmm. So that's that's one thing there. It is a great program in that, you know, it is free, but, and you can, um, it has some nice guides, like Procreate has a lot of similar features, but at the same time, it's, it's probably another generation out of updates in terms of being on par with some of the tools that we had in Sketchbook Pro. But that that fact alone was enough for me to go, hmm, maybe I should go where I feel like the company is actually investing in the product. I'm just doing a quick side view here just to keep me straight. Um, but go where the company, I feel like the company is investing in the product and that way, I don't feel like, oh, they're gonna just cut and I'll be left without, you know, any kind of support. So that's that. And then why iPad Pro? Well, I do like Mac OS, so that's one. Two, the iPad Pro for me is a self-contained system, meaning I don't need to, um, I don't need to connect it to something else to use it. And like I said, I don't, I like Mac OS. I don't like Windows personally. So it makes sense for me to stick with something that just works nicely and well with Mac OS. Um, so that's why I like the iPad Pro. And the battery life is fantastic. The, uh, let's see, I'm just gonna group these together. Sorry, just a sec. Battery life is great. Connectivity, I have LTE on mine, so I can work from anywhere. Um, and it's gotten better. It's certainly not perfect, but it's gotten better for sure. Okay, so here I'm just working on capturing a nice clean outline, and then we'll figure out some of these details. I started working on um, pulling in a, a few of the Earl elements to the sketch you may have noticed um, but for now I'm just focusing on just getting some of the main lines in on this shoe and we're gonna have a, a little box toe here and I'm thinking kind of traditional in the front and then athletic in the back. You know, you're gonna be putting a lot of, you know, if these, if these are like a, a nice walker, if I'm, if I'm at a conference or something, I'm gonna be putting a lot of, uh, a lot of miles on, on the, the heel here. So maybe this is where I have some sort of cushioning, could be a lighting element, um, that kind of thing happening in the shoe. Let's get our tongue in as well. This, the side view sketch is just going to serve to supplement our main sketch here. For the laces, I'm gonna 
just keep these nice and simple maybe some sort of elastic similar to the Nike shoes that were referenced the Earl's the mullet of dress shoes yes exactly <laughs> we'll call it the mullet the Nike mullet like a bad Cole Haan attempt <laughs> I like that. The mullet. Business up front, party in the back. Maybe that's just a crease that fades out. Hello, Flow Monster. I am good. How are you doing? Happy Friday, my man. Or human <laughs> bad habit sorry guys okay so maybe we have something like this you know from the side maybe just something that shoots back and then transitions us into the more athletic style could be something like this that's an interesting graphic actually um by graphic i mean this area right it's kind of interesting that the intersection but side view like I said just just a quick uh, reference shot and we'll 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 adjust that as we figure out the design details for the rest of this but, you know maybe it just has a nice cushioning element on the heel right here because of our perspective point of view wouldn't be able to see a ton of that Right. Okay, I'm really liking where this is going. All right, so if this is a Nike shoe, maybe we have our, our swoosh here. And I'm just gonna ghost these lines in. This, aren't, this is not gonna be a part of the final, but maybe, maybe we have something where the swoosh appears toward the front okay and then i don't know maybe it uh i'm trying to figure out a way to have the swoosh kind of reappear in a, in a way in a sense you know like maybe these are stippled holes or something i gotta figure that out but here's here's an example where i might sketch it in a certain way but in reality it might be another way all right so maybe we have these dots that kind of represent the swoosh in effect sketch those in hope you're having fun following along perhaps a sketch a day welcome 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 do you ever wonder what fashion will be like in the future like are we just gonna wear weird stuff like what if your great 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 grandparents were alive today what would they think of all the stuff we're wearing would they be appalled would they just be completely confused i wonder I'm really digging this music. I found this playlist on Spotify. It's copyright free, so I can play it on the stream here. That's why I have it. So thanks for thanks for hanging, being a part of my great experiment, keeping me sane during this time of quarantine and self uh, sequestering, isolation, all that stuff. Thank you, Mike. Much appreciated. It's very kind of you. So yeah, like I said, um, I will be doing a kids stream that's going to be starting possibly today, but most likely next week. And I'll be doing crafts and arts for 
kids. So if you're interested in that, I will post, actually I should just post the link here. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to project the shape of this shoe. And I'll just kind of show you, this won't be a technical overview of shadows by any means, but what I'm trying to do in effect, let's make the line weight beefy up front, but I'm trying to take like this line, this point here and project them over in a way such that I'm mimic mimicking the shape of the shoe, okay? And now I have a shadow right there. Let me post a link for this stream so you guys can see it. Let's see, or not the stream, rather my, my kids YouTube that I wanna do. And there's plenty of kids resources. I just figured my kids are bored. They keep asking me to come on the stream. So I figured this would be a good way to, good way to have all that happen, okay? All right, so let me copy this. Give me just a sec, copy link. And let's paste this in the chat. All right, boom, there you go. I'll pin this. So if you want to have your kids watch, I will be posting there eventually. So you can check that out. Um, it's a separate channel, so it won't have this stuff available, but you'll be able to see that. All right, so going back to my shadow here, that was my quick, quick, quick explanation, but that's the gist of it, is just trying to mimic the shape of the shoe in a way that it feels like it's resting on the plane. All right, I don't know if this is futuristic enough for you. Um, <laughs> So maybe it needs some other stuff, but I like the idea of this kind of athletic thing. Like we had that intersection, maybe this glows or something. We'll figure it out. We'll put some glowy stuff in. Instead of the traditional wingtip shape, maybe there's some other cutouts on the front. And we'll just write futuristic dress, shoe. All right, so this is our futuristic dress shoe. Here's a tip, by the way, if you're drawing digitally and you want to make a sketch seem tighter, cleaner, draw big and then scale it down. So that's what I did with my text there. All right, so just hiding that layer, which gives me an opportunity to kind of fix a few things. So if I'm not totally satisfied, for example, with the way this shoe is tapering, I can make a selection, then hit transform, make sure it's set to warp. And now I can kind of play with this a little bit. So I can just kind of push and pull, tweak some shapes. You know, if this feels like it needs to be more like so, and then hit done. So there's the before and there's the after. Before, after. So I'm gonna go with the after. The casual era, <laughs> Kareem Rashid. All right, so this will be fun because I think I'm gonna use my watercolor brushes to do the toe of the shoe and then we'll use the marker to do the athletic portion of the shoe. Um, let's add just a couple more details on the athletic portion of the shoe, you know, maybe this is just some welded captures or thing for these laces. I'm not quite sure, but I do want to block. I just wanted to block out a little thing there. Feels good. Let's put a little tag on the toe. Maybe 
maybe a little logo and text. I don't know, are they gonna still put text on shoes in the future? Who knows? What is my Logicel that I use? I'm not sure what you mean by Logicel, Flow Monster. You tell me. What is that? All right. So when I render, everything color-wise is on the layers below. Everything else. So let's go ahead. I have this palette that I put together for sketch today, but I didn't have any browns. But let's just start with this orange and I'm gonna move the colors a little bit into the red like so and now I have a brown and jump to my watercolor brush so I've got this watercolor spot here and the reason I want to use these brushes is I feel like I can get a nice leather like texture so these will be included in my brush pack that will be available soon but I'm just gonna fill this in with this brown as cleanly as I can and I have an idea of lighting and where I want things to go so here for example on this edge now that it's changing direction the shoe itself rather I can paint along this edge like so and now I have some contrast being introduced the cool thing with these digital watercolor brushes as well is if I need to paint in white I can do that which can't really do with real watercolor so a couple little advantages there a little shadow core on the far side the tongue of the shoe I'm gonna make leather as well it kind of has a maybe futuristic space Western vibe but we'll roll with it if I tag Kareem on insta he'd love it huh, we'll see Maybe I will. I haven't really been following that guy for a while now, so you guys just let me know what he's up to. Wasn't ever like one of my favorite designers. Um, Naoto Fukusawa now, he's one of my favorite designers. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. But I'm always looking for new inspiration and uh, Info, so if you know of a designer or someone, you're like, yo, you should follow this person. Let me know. Because I can add them to my, my following. All right, so like I said, contrast is your friend. Um, <laughs> Matthew says, I need an iPad. <laughs> this looks like so much fun. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it is fun. Um, <clears throat> so now I'm gonna switch to my airbrushes and these I'm trying to sort out these are all my highlighter airbrushes but I want to paint over this watercolor just like so it's gonna help give me a nice little shadow core right in this leather section on the far side here as well up the laces We'll make the laces a cool color, don't worry. Back to the watercolor spot here. I just wanna have a little texture on the top. But yeah, it's it's fun. This is, to go back to that question, why don't I use a Wacom? Um, being able to draw and sketch anywhere and really just have fantastic results, I think, that's just, it's just nice. It's nice to be able to have that and do that as I'm working. <clears throat> wow, my laptop's gonna die, it's crazy. This thing, uh, streaming apparently consumes tons of power, so. <laughs> okay, now switching to my gray, I'm gonna use my marker brushes. These are brushes I've been working really hard on. And let me zoom in so you guys can see. I don't know if you can see that texture in the marker at all, but that's what I'm after. I'm after things that look real, like paper, like real tools and so forth, okay? So that's why I made these brushes. Cuz 
I want to be able to sketch the way I'm used to sketching, you know? I feel like, uh... Yo, Greg, what's up? I'm old Greg. Do you guys know old Greg? If you know old Greg, I love you forever. I like weird humor, weird British humor. And uh, old Greg is, is classic. All right. So there's our little portion. Let's get the swoosh colored in a little bit. I'm gonna put some gray over this just to suggest that maybe it's just a texture or finish change, not so much a color change. A little bit of shadow in there. Let's put some shadow over here because what I'm gonna do is switch this to color burn or multiply. Let's do multiply today and then add a bit more the shadow here on the laces. Still using my marker brush. I just, I love this brush. I'm old Greg. <laughs> it's so good and so weird. <clears throat> All right. So for the heel and the laces, I wanted to use this blue, but I want to use like a nice saturated blue. Still using the marker brush, shade this in like so. And I'm gonna put a light in the heel, so don't you worry. Maybe this tag is blue, and the laces are blue as well. But yeah, man, I am, I'm really excited for these brushes. I'm excited to have you guys try them out. I've had some friends testing them a little bit, and so far, they're like, these are amazing. Um, but I've been working really hard on them, so lots of late nights, lots of uh, testing. I actually went out and photographed and scanned my own textures to create these brushes, so they're quite literally unique, not using anything stock. Um, all the settings, all that stuff is for me, so definitely check it out when they launch. Um, and I don't think y you won't be disappointed. <laughs> I'll just put it that way. All right, so let's lighten up the top just a little bit with my white marker here. And I'm just shading over. It's okay because I'm going to switch the blending mode and do a little bit of fading, but I'm just trying to create a little bit of texture and lightness where I kind of need it for this to really pop. All right, so let's change this to add, and I'm gonna crank the opacity down like so. Make a new layer, and I also have this speckle brush, so for texture purposes, I like to use it. I can kind of airbrush on top here, give this whole thing a little bit of texture. This was actually created by me spray painting um, in my yard, and I scanned the texture in and wanted to use this to give my sketches just a little bit more realistic feel. All right. So there's that. And now I'm gonna finish out the shadow with my marker. There's probably a lot more I could do to this sketch actually, but we'll, uh, We'll wrap things up here pretty quick. Just overdrawing with this marker, shading in. Sorry guys, I don't have the other camera set up where I can show you um, how I'm holding the iPad and all of that stuff today. But hopefully I remember next time. All right, and now I'm just gonna erase what I don't need. All right, just like that. And let's throw a reflection in 
Actually, I'm going to lighten up the shadow just a little bit. And now, on a new layer, I'm just going to pick this brown and use our watercolor brushes to kind of create a little bit of a color reflection in our surface here. All right. So for this one, let's go ahead and change the layer blending mode to multiply. And as long as it's over the shadow, it should, oops, it's my eraser. As long as it's over the shadow, it should interact, interact nicely. You know, even picking this blue, I can have a little bit of a blue reflection. Pick this gray now, a little bit of a gray reflection in the surface to help things feel a little grounded. And for the background on the sketch, let's do blue because it'll help tie everything together, I feel. And then we'll have a little bit of a lighting effect on the side. So let me grab this real marker, oops, real marker brush, and then adjust the size. And now I'll come in and just like I would with a marker, kind of shade in create my gradient, blend, all that good stuff, because I do want that kind of natural feel to things. All right, on this one, let's race just for stylistic reasons, I'm not gonna erase the whole background. I kinda like how the blue is bleeding in there. So sometimes you can just play, you know, be expressive, figure out figure out what works for you and use that to your advantage. Now with the blue here, I'm gonna take this dirty airbrush or just a soft airbrush actually. And on the side here, let's say the, the element in the heel actually glows. Okay, on the ground plane, just gonna paint a little bit and then adjust the size on a new layer. This is where you can kind of play with lighting. Switch the blending mode to add. Okay, and now as I paint over these areas, let's make a new layer. But as I paint over these areas, it's gonna actually kind of intensify the glow, right? So even like going above the sketch layer here, and I'm just gonna put a couple little effect dots. I like to do that sometimes, um, but just in this sketch layer as well, and even above, just having that kind of glow effect. Maybe a little bit of glow toward the front of the shoe. Just for lighting effect, okay? Just like that. And on the toe of the shoe, let's just finish up some of these voids. Um, my pencil. You know, if these are really some sort of wingtip like venting or detail, just making sure those are all communicated and carried through in a way that makes sense, okay? On a new layer, I'm just going to use a little bit of white to kind of pop these edges so they feel like they're catching light where they need to be catching light. And I'll throw some stitches in just to finish up as well. All right, just that little bit of white. I'm going to hit the laces as well. Not quite sure what material that is, but just a little bit of white, some texture. Kind of help things pop. And now, 
Thank you, AK Ninja. <laughs> I should work for Nike. Well, if they want to hit me up, they can hit me up. I'll put it that way. All right. So this line I wanted to have feather out. So let's erase just a little bit here of that initial sketch. I kind of wanted this to feather out, right? Maybe blend in. But as far as stitches go, I have this little toe piece. Now I could draw it in like that, which I kind of like the look of, but I do want to show you this brush I have in my brush pack. And that is the stitcher brush. And I need to adjust the setting here. Thank you to Sam Whitworth. Um, I used to teach him and he showed me this. So under shape, I want to have follow stroke and then under properties, turn off orient to screen. Um, make sure that the shape is right here. Okay. And I'm going to also crank up the, let's see, where is it? I think it's, ah, crank up the streamline as well. Okay, so now I can just throw stitches on to the sketch. Pretty handy. So thanks to Sam for pointing that out. Actually, I wouldn't have stitches there. But yes, I do have a brush for putting stitches on if that's something you want to do. Super handy. For me or has been all right so we can throw those stitches in just like that on our sketch and we are just about done guys so thank you for the awesome awesome suggestions as always thank you so much and it's been fun we'll be back Tuesday or not Tuesday, sorry. We'll be back Sunday with another live sketch session. So you'll want to hit that up. If you use that link I posted in the chat, that's going to be for my kids focused arts and crafts art drawing uh, page. So you'll want to check that out if you've got kids who are into this stuff. Um, I'll be focusing mostly on elementary, middle school, which is everything up to high school in the stream. So if you've got high schoolers that are super talented or already capable, they might get a little bit bored, but maybe not. Um, in any case, check that out. Definitely subscribe. Turn on those alerts so you don't miss it. Okay. All right. So there's that sketch. All right, guys. Well, it's been fun. Thank you so much for hanging out. There's my my final sketch. Thank you for the idea on this uh, futuristic casual meets dress shoe by Nike. It's been fun. I'm going for about two hours now, which is crazy. Um, so once again, turn on alerts, turn on subscriptions, all that good stuff. And Definitely, um, if you use Discord and you want to show your work and have it show up in the next stream, I may do some resketching. That's where I take one of your sketches and overlay it or do my interpretation of that. Um, we've had a few of you submit over the last few months, so much appreciated. But if you do want to be included, feel free to do that. Or you can just hit me up with a suggestion in the Discord. Um, that's kind of a centralized place for you to reach out and communicate with me, but also other people. Um, you can hang out, post your work, ask for feedback, all that good stuff. All right, guys. Um, thank you for hanging. We'll see you next time right here on Sketch-A-Day. Peace out. Happy Friday. Have a good one.